Hi everyone, Mark here from Super 100 MPH. Today's video is a bit of fun from uh, round three of the 1985 Nissan Super Turbo Challenge. We have 12 cars prepared or repaired by this stage by Nissan team boss legend Fred Gibson. Drivers don't know which car they'll be in or where they'll start until that's pulled out of a hat and for heat two they have the reverse grid. You can tell all the drivers wanted to win this series because it was worth quite a lot of money. A bit of research and I found that first prize was $25,000 plus a brand new Nissan Skyline. Second prize was $13,000 and third prize was $10,000 and then $6,000, $4,000 down the line. Now $25,000 doesn't sound that much money today but I did a bit of research and in 1985 you could buy a brand new Holden Commodore for about $15,000 so it just gives you a bit of an idea. Anyway, the video starts straight up into Heat 1, and your commentators are Mike Raymond, Gary Wilkinson, and Neil Crompton. Coming up here four wide, looking for racing room, going into the right-hander at Val Valina. That's how close they are. Gary Scott he's out made wide. Beautiful, and... but he's, he's oh. that, and they all get hooked up, coming out uh, onto AGC straight. Here comes the charge of the uh, small car brigade down towards the Castrol S's with Alan Grice still able to hold the lead. Good challenge going on here for second and look at them approaching this corner four wide. Dick Johnson slots into second spot despite the biff in the side from Gary Scott. Got Scott still holding down third up on two wheels something through these S's. Glenn Seaton seems to have come through pretty quickly as well. Notice the rear, notice the car lose traction there, the rear wheel off the ground. Nose to tail, extreme through by the weave corner and back onto the main straight, coming down to complete one lap. Here they come past the strike. For the completion of the first lap, still five remain, and Grice firing along beautifully. Dick Johnson has dropped into second spot, Gary Scott up there into third as they make the run to the right-hander at Valvoline. And at this stage, Alan Grice very, very comfortably in front. Rice won one of the uh, two heats in Adelaide last week. Determined to continue the good work. Steered clear of the early trouble and has opened up a gap now of about uh, 30 metres on Dick Johnson. Johnson could do with a second place finish. Had uh, mechanical troubles uh, in the last round at Adelaide. Dropped a heat. Gary Scott using all the track in third place. Glenn Seaton holding down fourth. <laughs> Working out the... The suspension components. Two glow weave again. Still Grice the leader with a break on the field as they come out. There you can see Dick Johnson, Gary Scott is the next one to go through, followed by Bar uh, Glenn Seaton, of course. Uh, Portman is there keeping company with them. Steve Masterton, too, slotted into uh, fifth, sixth spot at the moment. Over the start finish line again. Grice out wide. Getting ready for the fast line through the corner. The cars this weekend are using a new Goodyear Vector tyre, change of brand from the first couple of rounds. Very deep tread in these tyres. Very deep on that corner. Yeah, it helps when they get into the rough. Top three have opened up a gap. Keep in mind for the second heat when the grid is reversed, the winner of this heat will go to the back. There's Peter McKay, still running at the tail of the field, position 12, but he will start uh, on pole position for the second heat, then they add up the scores. Because the cars are drawn out of a hat, well, not the cars literally, but uh, the numbers are drawn out of a hat, so uh, the drivers don't know until just before going out onto the circuit which car they're going to get. All identically prepared, in theory. Three laps remaining as they go over the start-finish line again, and still Grice leads Johnson, Gary Scott, Glenn Seaton, and Jeff Portman, Steve Masterton, and in car number eight. Oh, Steve Masterton, mentioned him twice. Through Valvoline Corner, a little bit of uh, dust storm there. They're using all of the road, particularly uh, the dirt ridge off the exit to the turn. They come down AGC straight, then turn into the Castrol S's, where we pick up uh, our race leader. Alan Grice. That'll give you an idea of the contortions through the bends. George Fury making up a couple of places back there in the field too. He uh, also was a heat winner in Adelaide last week and would like to improve his points position. Gary Rogers in car number six, the victim of the uh, 
the upside down club at Adelaide and he has McKay behind him running in 12th. That's the way they were running in Adelaide when he got tipped over. Exactly. <laughs> But they've all sorted themselves out today. We haven't had uh, anyone parked on the infield. Alan Grice doing a great job there. Johnson's getting closer. Yes, getting a little bit closer is our Queensland driver, Dick Johnson. Not back behind them too far is Scott. There's one off the course. It looked like Seaton, who uh, had dropped about three or four cars in that corner. And uh, as they go down towards the Castrol S's, Alan Grice is going to find a Queenslander very, very close to him by the time they reach Glow Weave. Grice and Dick Johnson. Coming down to the right-hander now at uh, Glowweave that brings them back onto the straight with one lap to go this time around. So last chance for Johnson. Can he apply sufficient pressure to Grice? If anybody can, Dick can. We'll have a look as they come along the straight. Johnson losing out just a little bit in the uh, in the run up to uh, Valvoline. He's going to have one last chance, and, that'll and he's be got a little muffler problem too, hanging under the car as Tricky Dick. Yeah, exhaust pipe. And he's hanging in there and going after Grice. They're on their final lap. Gary Scott is back in third, but uh, not close enough to make a challenge for first or second. Here's the last chance coming up for Johnson through the Castrol S's. He knows it too. Keeps the foot flat going into the corner, closes up within a length. But obviously the drag under the car is not doing him uh, any good. Coming down to Glow Weave for the final time, the right-hander. So Alan Grice, by virtue of starting from pole position, has been able to dictate the pace of this event. Comes out of the corner and down now towards the uh, chequered flag. Dick Johnson still holding down second and that's the way they're going to finish. And across the strike, the wind goes to Alan Grice in car number one. So that's going to make it interesting for the second heat coming up a little later in our telecast. Confirmation of placings, Grice the winner. Dick Johnson finishes in second and Gary Scott of Queensland third. In Goodyear's Formula Laser Series, six laps means more wear and stress for a tyre than six months of normal driving. It's not surprising, then, that the tyre they use is exclusively the Goodyear Grand Rally S, a tyre which offers an uncompromising combination of mileage and grip. What may surprise you is finding the same Grand Rally S tyre on many family cars. Goodyear, leading the world in tyre technology. The special edition Ford Image Series. The Image Laser, Image Meteor, and Image Telstar. The very image of today, with new style woven seat fabrics. Special wheels, new color schemes, and more from $600 worth of extra features at no extra cost. So much value, so much style. The Image Telstar, Meteor, and Laser. Uh, there wasn't too much action for the front runner from there on. Grice had it all his own way. And uh, if uh, somebody else doesn't get a hurry on, uh, Grice, he could end up leading the series after this heat if he puts up another good performance because uh, Colin Bond, the series leader, not all that far in front of Grice going into today's round. And unless Bondy can come up with something pretty spectacular in this uh, upcoming race, uh, Grice might well start marching away towards the big prize money. And big prize money... It is. Peter Mackay has uh, pole position for this race, keeping in mind he started off the back in the first heat earlier today. So Grice will go to the back of the field. That makes it almost impossible. We haven't had anyone come off the back and win one yet. But here comes the field along now to line up prior to the start of heat two. That's heat six in the series of the Nissan Turbo Super Challenge. Oh, the marshal's about to... And grid them up for a start. This is six laps again, 1.61 kilometres, as we've uh, told you. And there's John Bow, the man that uh, was just uh, so kind a few moments ago to be up here with us and to give us his expert view on that round of the Formula Two Championship. Well, check out the grid. I think, uh, as Mike said, it has been, in fact, reversed on the earlier heat. So this is the way. 
it shapes up for round two of the Nissan Turbo Super Challenge. On pole position, car number 12, Peter McKay, and alongside him on the front row in car 11, John Bauer. Then in position three is car number 10, Jim Richards. Position four, car number nine, Colin Bond. On the third row of the grid, we've got car eight, Steve Masterton. Car seven, George Fury. On the next row, car six, Gary Rogers, and car five, Glenn Seaton. Then car number four, Gary Scott, Car three is Dick Johnson, and on the last row, car two, Jeff Portman, and car number one, the first heat winner, Alan Grice. Well, Peter Mackay has it all to do off pole position. He's been lucky enough to, or unlucky enough, to pull the back line. Well, a couple of heats so far, but always winds up on the front line for the uh, later heat each afternoon. John Bowers, Gary mentioned, starts from position two. Interesting second row, Jim Richards and Colin Bond. Steve Masterton and George Fury. And Dick Johnson, who performed so well in the earlier heat, starts out of position number 10 in this six-lapper. Cars move away on their warm-up lap, Mike. I've just had a little uh, opportunity here to add up the points tally after the first heat in round three. And as I unofficially make it off my charts here at the moment, Alan Grice should lead with 117 points. In second position at this stage would be Colin Bond with 103 and sharing third placing three drivers at the moment Peter McKay, John Bow, and Dick Johnson. So that's going to be quite interesting as they come to this second heat of round three. So I'll continue through and work some of these other point scores out but that looks like the unofficial top five or six at this stage. And that'll probably change again after this heat. That's for certain. As we mentioned before, Grice off the back. That's a pretty hard task for any driver. So much talent and the car so equal that on a track the size of Caldo and that uh, S-Bend section down there at Castrol, it's almost impossible. The car's coming in past the crowd in Glowweave Corner. I've been impressed here over the last few days with the amount of work being carried out at uh, Keelor International Raceway. As mentioned before, the new uh, 1.5 mile tri-oval being uh, built within the complex and they are working 24 hours a day on it have a night shift in they're working under floodlights so they're obviously very very serious about their big race coming up uh, towards the end of october so the front line is set peter mckay and john bauer so watch the charge to the first corner up to valvoline Yes, Alan Grice, uh, <laughs> now at the rear of the grid, is likely to come uh, charging through like a steam train coming down to the first corner, so look out for the action. They're racing and getting away in heat two of the Nissan Turbo Super Series here and at the inside position, Mackay was away very smartly indeed, being forced off the track there, one of the drivers, they head up to the top corner for the first time going through there very very quickly to lead as they come onto the oops through the rough too using many and varied lines through glow weave or through uh, valvoline corner as they come down the back straight steve masterton got a dream run through on the inside there to move into second place bow has gone through to take over the lead masterton drops into second as they come down to the castrol s's and they are very very close indeed for the run now down to glow weave John Bowers had a nice old nudge in that first heat as well. Look at the right-hand side of the front guard. Now they're into low wave corner. Masterton in second spot. They line up for the big run down the main straight here at Keelor. Coming down to the line and with one lap completed and five remaining, Bauer has gone through, Masterton dropping into second place. Moving up very quickly indeed is Colin Bond. And Jim Richards too, tucked in there behind them, the wheel up there at the rear. Losing a little traction as they go through the corner. by Colin Bond and he'll be looking forward to posting uh, big points here in this heat because he was the series leader coming into today's round. Bauer continues to lead. Look at him across the track. Richards, Bond. And I tell you also has made a tremendous start as Dick Johnson up to sixth. Not bad at all. Coming off the second last row of the grid, Johnson. He's passed uh, four cars coming down to glow weave again and still John Bauer will lead out of the turn with Masterton in hot pursuit. Bond also well positioned and Johnson starting to come through the pack. Once again across 
the start finishing line here John Bauer, Masterton not that far back behind him Jim Richards into third now look at Bowsko <laughs> locking up the brake as they head up into the right hand Alan Price is up into uh, ninth spot off the rear of the grid he really hasn't been able to make up that much ground nowhere near as much as Steve Masterton as uh, Dick Johnson rather off the second row, last row has uh, come up to challenge the pace getters now and Masterton really beginning to put the pressure on John Bauer it's through the cast off this is again past the spectators on the hill Masterton gets a little closer that was a new line from Johnson want to use the uh, curb there so he went straight over the uh, dirt there to miss it completely that's how he lost the exhaust pipe in the first heat the same sort of maneuver John Bauer across the start finish line leads Steve Masterton third place in car number 10 is Jim Richards then Colin Bond and then Dick Johnson Johnson launching a challenge on Bond as they go into the bottom corner Masterton in second spot sandwiched in between the leader John Bauer and Jim Richards in third oh. spot there's Scott out in the rough as they go down the back, but he's managed to find his way back onto the bitumen. Fury in amongst these with Johnson. They're having a great old scrap. Nothing between that. Here comes Grice getting a move on now. Yes, Grice has put about four behind him after starting off the back. We wait for them on the approach now to Glowweave Corner again. Jeff Faulkner wonders why he ever gave up rallying for this. Just the uh, circuit. A bit of everything here. John Bauer coming off blow weave, still leads from Steve Masterton, Jim Richards is the next one, Bond being the next one back behind them, and then Dick Johnson. With about two laps remaining in the Nissan Turbo Super Challenge here from Keylor. Many of the drivers using the outside line, a couple of them sneaking up on the inside as well. There's our race leader, John Bauer. Doing this very, very nicely indeed. Masterton has found himself now under uh, attack from Jim Richards as they come down AGC straight towards the Castrol S's. John Bow was saying before to me, Mike, that uh, with the new Goodyear tyres on these cars, they're not quite as taily as they used to be. I recall last weekend at Adelaide when they came to the right hander at the end of the straight, they were unbelievably sideways. This was playing into the hands of John Bauer. He's uh, smiling up front while Masterton, Richards, and Johnson go ahead and hammer at Tom. Well, this uh, would lift John Bauer's point score up to 125 points, Gary, if he can stay where he is at the moment. He currently has 95 after two rounds and one heat. One lap now remaining for our leader, John Bauer, in car number 11. Behind him, Steve Masterton in hot pursuit. Jim Richards in car 10. Colin Bond right behind him. This could be a fascinating finish for these minor placings. A look at this on the inside. Oh, Master Richards has taken Masterton there on the inside. Bow still clear. There you can see them as they head down. AGC straight for the final time. Bow is there. Masterton trying to fight back here on the outside of Richards, but Richards should get him. No, he doesn't. Masterton gets him again, but now Richards has his moment as they go onto the uh, onto the rough. Oh, and Masterton almost looping it. Three court out on the outside that time was Dick Johnson making his last minute uh, dive for the turn. Coming down to Glow Weave for the final time. John Bowers going to go on and win this one. They come out of the final corner. Bowers already heading in the direction of the chequered flag. Richardson, Masterton still at it as they come out of the bend and come up now for the chequered flag. And the win in uh, heat number two today at Keylor is in fact going to go to John Bauer. Second spot in car number 10 is Jim Richards. And Dick Johnson in car number three has got through to third place. But we'll recap the placings for you. The win, of course, going to John Bauer in car number 11. Second place goes to Jimmy Richards from New Zealand. And third place goes to Queensland's own Dick Johnson. At Skinny's, we want your dad to feel great on Father's Day. So we're giving you a big $50 a pair saving on this discontinued style of real sheepskin car seat covers. How much? Save $50 a pair, Dick. 
fantastic. And this style, real sheepskin, $29.95 each. Or, for only $7.95, a real sheepskin steering wheel cover. This Father's Day, your dad will say... It's great feeling skinny. Skinnies, Australia's sheepskin specialists. Marvellous what a bit of TV commentary can do for you, Johnny Bow. You got back out there in the saddle and uh, just took off like smoke and they never got near you. Yeah, it must have been that sort of experience <laughs> and commentating on the Formula 2 race made me drive a little bit cleaner and not so crazy. It's, it uh, hasn't done you any harm either in the overall point score. You can't be far off the lead. Well, I didn't have a very good race in the first heat. I uh, got into a bit of trouble in the early part of the race and knocked a few headlights out and things like that. So I don't know how, how I'm going overall. But it's a series and you've got to hang in there and try and be there at the finish. Yeah, big bucks at the finish too. Yeah, that's why everybody goes so nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Grice, first heat winner. And I actually, I think um, you might be the overall series leader now. They're still tabulating the points, but Bondi was only just in front of you coming into today's round. So a win and you finished not far behind the place getters in that second heat. Oh, I've done the sums. <laughs> oh, have you? Yes, yeah. I'll bet you have. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a race. Yes, it was. I was, uh, I got a boom of a start and um, picked up a lot of places and then got one right up the backside which sort of uh, made me the end result of that was that uh, I went back a few but uh, no it was good I enjoyed the run and uh, the motor cars and <laughs> they keep coming back and getting it every week and they keep taking it <laughs> I think all the boys I think all the boys enjoy it. Dick Johnson uh, second heat there you came off the second last row and uh, really came out smoking well, actually, we got a really good start, and uh, a lot of guys seem to go pretty crazy into the first corner, which sort of leaves everything sort of wide open for those who sort of wait. And uh, I just sort of hung around and waited and copped a few hits here and there, but I was right after that. <laughs> oh, there goes the siren, and uh, that signals time for the start of the next race, and it's time for us to take a break. Then we'll be back at Keelor International. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. And as Alan Grice once said, I hope you are watching Super 100 MPH. And John Bow, Super 100 MPH. Watch it. Thanks, John. You're beautiful. <laughs> Until next time, see ya.